To date, all the procedures that we've created, whether that's a sub-procedure or a function, have all been triggered by things that we've decided on. A keyboard shortcut, a button on a form, a toolbar button. There are in Excel a number of events that can trigger procedures. Now these events are broken into two groups really. They are broken into work group events and worksheet events. So something that happens in the workbook as a whole can trigger a series of VBA actions or something that happens on a particular worksheet can trigger a series of VBA actions. These events are limited to a restricted amount, but what they can do is exactly as we've been able to do and cover during our procedures. So let's explore where these events are, where they're stored, where they're created, and the potential choices of event. So in a new Excel file, we go into the Visual Basic, and what you'll see in the editor, and you've seen already, we just haven't used any of them, is a folder called Microsoft Excel Objects, which if it's not expanded, needs expanding. And within there, you will see a single sheet for each worksheet, and then a single sheet called this workbook. These are effectively code sheets completely associated with each of the relevant worksheets or with the workbook as a whole. All of the procedures that we want to create that will be triggered by an event must go in the correct worksheet or in the sheet for this workbook, if it's a workbook event. To access the sheets, we simply double click. So I double click this workbook and I end up with a code sheet that looks exactly the same as a module, but is going to be used for our event code, totally related only to this workbook as a whole. Now the procedures for events have to be called specific names. And in order to get those specific names correct, then we use the tools. We don't type them in. You can type them in, but nobody really knows all of the events off by heart and all of the potential parameters that each of those events require. So in our This Workbook code sheet, in the top left hand corner, the only option here is Workbook. So we need to choose Workbook. And you can see we then get a subroutine created called Workbook underscore open. The underscore open is our event. So when this workbook opens, something will happen. We can do something. What we can do is anything we can write in the VBA. If you don't want the open event, then you simply ignore this for the meantime and go and choose a different event. And you'll see these are all the events that you can have for a workbook. Activate, add in, install, add in, uninstall, after save, after XML export, etc, etc. We've got before you close, before you print, before you save, a new chart, a new sheet. So if you were to add a new sheet, we could trigger some VBA code first. Sheet activate. So when you move to a sheet, you'll notice that if we choose that one, it actually requires a parameter, which is the name of the sheet. So when a worksheet is activated, we can do something to that worksheet. We may want to give it a specific name or use the date to determine a name. Really, the limitations are only on your knowledge of VBA. But this is your trigger. And that is an event in the workbook as a whole. If you don't want the default one that is given to you, you can then simply delete that at this stage. If you want to add another routine in with a different event trigger, then you simply make sure you're outside of this routine and go up to the list of events and choose a different event, perhaps sheet deactivate. And that creates another skeleton of a routine, which is a workbook event of when the sheet is deactivated. Now you'll find we've got slightly different events in a worksheet. So if I double click sheet one, that will bring up the code sheet for sheet one. And again, we go to the top left and choose worksheet this time. It's the only option to choose. It defaults to selection change. We can come up to the right and change our minds to again, activate, calculate, change. Change is quite a popular one that deals with when something is changed on the sheet. So worksheet underscore change. And here the parameter is target as range. And then within our subroutine, we can use target to do what we want to do really, because target is the cell that has been changed. So we can then take that cell, take the value, place it somewhere else, change the value back, whatever we want to do with it. But the mechanics are, this is a worksheet event and the event type is underscore change. 
And this is the parameter value that gets passed in to this procedure that we can then make use of. If you don't want the default one that came with it, you simply highlight and delete. If you want to add another event, make sure you're outside of the sub and end sub, come up and choose a different event. And we create another skeleton. So we're going to look at some examples of workbook events and worksheet events in a little more detail. What we've effectively tried to cover here is where these event procedures go, which is worksheet events go into the relevant worksheet code sheet. Workbook events go into this workbook. Each of these Excel objects is created for you and exists for every Excel file that you create. Unlike the standard module that you have to insert the first one, they have to follow a strict naming convention, which is workbook underscore the trigger, effectively, the event, and the same in a worksheet. It's worksheet underscore event. To save getting the right syntax, you simply choose your events from the drop list at the top right hand side, and the skeleton of the sub procedure is created for you. So if the trigger exists that you're looking for, you can trigger a set of VBA actions that will be then carried out when that event is fired. Now these events sound fantastic and they are fantastic and they are very useful. Just bear in mind that like all of the VBA code that you create and place in procedures, whether that's writing the VBA or recording macros, if somebody, when they open their workbook, disables all macros, it will also disable all of these event-driven pieces of code as well. So if these pieces of event are mission critical to your file working, bear that in mind that if anyone disabling their macros will disable this code from actually activating 